Hello everyone. Today we are going to find the member forces in this truss using tension coefficients method. I have solved this problem using method of joints and method of sections. To watch these videos, you can click the links in the description. Before solving the problem, let us see briefly about the tension coefficient method. It is a systematic presentation of method of joints. So if you know method of joints, doing the problems using this method is very easy. Using this method, space frames can be easily analyzed. Using this method, we can easily analyze three-dimensional frames. Also, this method is valid for the perfect frames. Tension coefficient can be defined as the ratio between the tension or pull of a member to its length. Now let us come to the question. In this truss, in the point A, there is a hinged support and in the point D, there is a roller support. We know that in the hinged support, there will be two reactions and in the roller support, there will be only one reaction. Here, there is only vertical reaction. To find VA, let us take a moment about D. Let us keep clockwise as positive and anticlockwise as negative. VA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 15. So 15 VA. The load 16 is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 10. The load 12 is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is also negative and the distance is 5. The load 10 is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be positive and the distance is 4. For VA, we will get 12 kN by applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0, we can find VD and by applying the rule Sigma H is equal to 0. We can find HA. Now we have to find the coordinates in the x and y directions. Let us keep the point A as the origin. So in this point x and y are 0. In the point B x is 5 and y is 0. In the point C x is 10 and y is 0. And in the point D x is 15 and y is 0. In the point f, x is 5 and y is 4. And finally, in the point e, x is 10 and y is 4. First, let us take the joint d and find the tension coefficients. Here, I have taken the joint d. In the joint d, there are two members, d, e, and CD. Also, there is a vertical reaction 16. Tension coefficient method is similar to method of joints. We can apply the rules sigma h is equal to 0 and sigma v is equal to 0. When we apply this rule, we have to only consider the horizontal members and inclined members. When we apply this rule, we have to only consider the vertical members and inclined members. So in both of the rules, we have to consider the inclined members. Same like method of joints, initially all of the members are assumed to be tensile. Suppose if we get a negative value, our assumption is incorrect. Actually, the member is compressive. According to the direction, we have to keep the members as positive or negative. When we apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0, we can keep upwards positive and downwards as negative. When we apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0, we can keep right side positive, left side as negative. We have to keep the horizontal distance as x and the vertical distance as y. When we apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0, we have to multiply the vertical distance of the member with the tension coefficient. When we apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0, 
we have to multiply the horizontal distance of the member with the tension coefficient. We should not multiply the loads or reactions with anything. We have to just apply them directly. Let us take the member DE. We can keep the horizontal distance of this member as XDE and the vertical distance as YDE and the tension coefficient as TDE. Similarly, if you take CD, the horizontal distance is XCD, the vertical distance is YCD and the tension coefficient is TCD. First, we have to apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0 because there will be only one unknown. We know that when we apply this rule, we have to only take the vertical forces and the inclined forces. 16 is vertical, we have to take it. DE is inclined, we have to take it. CD is horizontal, we should not take it. We know that when we apply this rule, we have to multiply the vertical distance of the member with the tension coefficient. Here there is only one member DE. So we are multiplying the vertical distance with the tension coefficient of the member. Here there is a reaction 16. We have to just apply that. We should not multiply 16 with anything. This member is acting upwards. When we apply this rule for the members, we can keep this line as a reference. If the member comes above this line, we can keep that as positive. If it goes below that line, we can keep that as negative. Right now it is above the line. That is why we are keeping this term as positive. 16 is acting upwards so that it is also positive. Let us find the vertical distance of YDE. This is the vertical distance. 4 minus 0, it will be 4. We can apply that. For TDE, we will get minus 4 kN per meter. Now let us apply the rule. Sigma H is equal to 0. We know that when we apply this rule, we have to only take the horizontal and inclined members. 16 is vertical. We should not take it. Only we have to take CD and DE. We know that when we apply this rule, we have to multiply the horizontal distance of the member with the tension coefficient of the member. Here there are two members. We have to multiply the horizontal distance of both of them with the tension coefficient of them. When we apply this rule for the members, we can keep this line as the reference. Left side negative and on the right side positive. Now both of the members are on the left side, so both of them are negative. The horizontal distance of DE is 15 minus 10, it will be 5. We have already found TDE, let us apply that. The horizontal distance of CD is 15 minus 10, so that we will get 5. For TCD, we will get 4 kN per meter. Now we can take the joint E. Suppose if you take the joint C, there will be three unknowns. But when we take the joint E, there will be only two unknowns. In the joint E, first let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to zero. When we apply this rule, we have to only take 12 EC and ED. We know that we have to multiply the vertical distance with the tension coefficients. Both of the members are acting downwards, so both of them are negative. 12 is acting downwards, so it is also negative. Vertical distance of EC is 4 minus 0, so it will be 4. And the vertical distance of DE is also 4 minus 0, so it will be 4. TDE. We have already got which is minus 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for TCE, we will get 1 kN per meter. Now, let us apply this rule. When we apply this rule, we have to only take EF and DE. EF is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. DE is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. The horizontal distance of EF is 10 minus 5. 
so it will be 5. The horizontal distance of D is 15 minus 10, so it is also 5. We know the value of T D E minus 4. Let us apply that. For T E F, we will get minus 4 kN per meter. Now we can take the joint C. In the joint C, first we have to apply this rule because there will be only one unknown. When we apply this rule, we have to only take C E and C F. Both of them are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. The vertical distance of C E is 4 minus 0, so it will be 4. The vertical distance of C F is 4 minus 0, so it is also 4. We have already calculated T C E, which is 1. Let us apply that. For T C F, we will get minus 1 kN per meter. Now let us apply this rule. When we apply this rule, we have to take BC, CD and CF. CF and CB are acting towards the left side. So both of them are negative. CD is acting towards the right side. So it will be positive. The horizontal distance of CF is 10 minus 5. So it will be 5. TCF we know which is minus 1. The horizontal distance of BC is 10 minus 5, so it will be 5. The horizontal distance of CD is 15 minus 10, so it will be 5. TCD we already know which is 4, we can apply that. For TBC we will get 5. Now we can take the joint B. First let us apply the rule, sigma V is equal to 0. Here there is only one vertical force, there is no inclined force or any vertical load. In this case TBF will be 0. Now let us apply the rule sigma H is equal to 0. The member AB is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. And BC is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. The horizontal distance of AB is 5 minus 0. So it will be 5. The horizontal distance of BC is 10 minus 5. So it will be 5. We know the value of TBC, 5. Let us apply that. For TAB, we will get 5. Now let us take the joint A. We have already found TAB. Only we need to find TAF. By applying this rule, we can find TAF as minus 3, we need to find the length of all of the members. Length of AB is 5, length of FE and BC is 5, and length of CD is 5, length of FB and EC is 4. To find the length of AF, FC and ED, we can use Pythagoras theorem, root of 5 square plus 4 square we will get 6.4 meter. Now let us make a table. In the table, first let us enter all of the members, then the tension coefficients, then the length of the members. To find the force, we have to multiply the tension coefficient with the length. These tension coefficients are negative, so the forces will be in compression. Here I have applied all of the forces in the truss. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.